Hello, I'm Win Le. In this demo, I will show you how to build a business process using IBM BPM. Here are the objectives. We will build a mortgage approval process application that will run in IBM BPM. You'll learn the steps needed to build a solution, and you'll see how easy it is to use IBM BPM. We'll build the solution by simply using a web browser connected to a BPM running in an IBM cloud. We'll have three iterations, similar to a real-life project. In each iteration, we'll add more and more detail, and we'll be able to test each iteration by using a concept called playbacks. In iteration one, we'll start with the basics. We'll set up the process application, we'll build the initial process flow, the happy path, and we'll play back the process. Let's get started. I'll first log on to Process Center. Process Center is a repository that stores and governs all the process applications in your environment. I will create a new process application now for our mortgage process. Let's call it Mortgage Application Process. I'll give it an acronym or short name as well as a description. We now have a new process app. Let's go work on it in Process Designer. Process Designer is an easy-to-use web-based tool for authoring process applications. Your process app's components are listed on the left-hand panel. You can see processes, user interface screens, teams, data, and more. Let's build our first component, the process flow. You'll see the process diagram come up. The first thing we'll do is to work on the roles. So let's call this role Mortgage Officers. We're going to add another swim lane by dragging it from the palette on the right. And let's call this role Mortgage Managers. And we'll add another role. Drag it once again and call this uh, Underwriters. We now have three people swim lanes as well as a system swim lane. The next thing we'll want to do is to add tasks or activities to our business process. So from the right-hand palette, you can drag a task over, and we'll call this task Enter Application Data. Let's add a couple more tasks. One we'll put in the Underwriter Swim Lane, and the other we'll put in the Mortgage Manager Swim Lane. For the underwriter's task, we will call it Assess Risk. And for the other task, we're actually going to edit in an alternative area on the uh, bottom property sheet, and we'll call it Review for Approval. So now we have three tasks, one for each of the swim lanes. In the system swim lane, let's add a few system tasks. System tasks are different than human tasks, because they are performed by computer systems. There's no screen involved. Usually uh, some IT system does something for you on the back end. So we'll call the first task Update Systems of Record. We'll call this next one Send Declined Notification. And the third one, we will call it Send Acceptance Notification. Okay, so now we have all our tasks. Now let's wire them together. And you can see that you can uh, just hover the, the mouse over and then the lines will appear. And then you can just drag them between component to component. It's very easy. I'm going to adjust my boxes a little. And actually uh, make my system swim lane a little bigger so I can stack those two tasks on top of each other and then wire update systems of record to send acceptance letter. Then I'll move the end event all the way down to the system swim lane and I'll wire that together. And then finally, um, by clicking the control button and selecting more than one box, I can do some alignment. So they, uh, you know, the lines are straight and they are at the right height. I can do that at the start as well. And now we have a complete process. Let's take a look at our process diagram so far. 
zoom out, maximize the screen, you can see that we have it starting at enter application, going to assess risk, to review for approval, to update systems of record, and send acceptance notification, and then end. That's our happy path. So now let's do what we call a playback of the process. We press the run button, and now you see the browser change from designer mode to inspector mode. The first task in the process, enter application data, will be highlighted in orange. We are currently running an instance of this process. The orange highlighted task shows that it is active right now. You can see the details of the running instance on the right hand panel. The instance ID, when it started, what tasks are open, etc. Now I'll press the Open Instance Details UI button, which will launch in a new browser tab, an end user view of this process instance. So you can see data, documents, tasks, the stream, activities. And we'll see that the enter application data task is active. We'll go click on that. And a screen appears. This is kind of a dummy screen right now, but it shows you what could be there when you go fill out the screen. And then we'll press done to complete it. Now, we'll see that Assess Risk comes up. So we'll work on that. we we'll see another dummy screen. And now we will uh, go up here and press uh, View Process Diagram. And you can see that that process diagram that we built, now it's highlighted in yellow to tell you that Assess Risk is open and active. We'll go back to the, the screen. We'll press Done. And now we see Review for Approval come up. We'll click on that. Let's check the uh, process diagram again. Yep, review for approval. And then we'll click done to complete this screen. Okay, now we'll see that our process instance is completed now. Um, if you click on task and look at your completed task, you can see that all of these were done. And then open, there's no more uh, tasks left. Let's take a snapshot of what we've built so far. Snapshots are IBM BPM's built-in version mechanism. You can go back to this snapshot at any time in the future. Okay, iteration one is complete. To review, we set up our process application, we built the initial process flow, and we played back the process. A couple takeaways. You can see that building is very easy using graphical tools and just a web browser and you can play back your process at any time. Let's move on to iteration two. We're going to add user interface screens, or coaches, to the human steps in your process. If we look at the process diagram, you can see the three steps where we'll need some screens. We're gonna start out by adding a toolkit to our process application. Toolkits are reusable code libraries that contain pre-built components. They're entirely optional, but they can reduce your effort by a lot. This toolkit was created by our fictitious company called Better Mortgage. It contains a few UI screen controls as well as data elements. Okay, let's add some data to our process app. We'll go to the variables tab and we'll add a variable called application. It will be of type application as well. This came from the toolkit that we imported. We'll set some default values, and then we'll quickly look at the properties within. You can see a whole bunch of fields, application ID, customer, mortgage, status, etc. And customer can be expanded as well as mortgage. Now that we have some data to work with, let's go build some screens. We'll go back to the process diagram. We'll select the first task, enter application data, and we'll go down to the implementation tab we're going to build a new human service that will override the default one that we used in the previous iteration. The next screen you'll see is a screen flow with one step in it, where it says coach. A coach is a UI screen in IBM BPM. When you create a new human service, the tool makes it easy by automatically laying out the coach based on the variables that have been defined. We're going to do something a little fancier though, so we're going to delete that coach and we'll create a new one by dragging a new coach from the right hand panel. And then when you double click on it, it'll allow you to select a template and we'll uh, use this header footer grid template. 
Now we can go edit the coach. We'll first move the OK button to the footer. And then we'll put an image in the header. I'll specify which image. This will be the Better Mortgage Blue logo from the toolkit. And next, we will add some content. So we'll drag a section control. And within the section, we will drag a tab container. In the first tab, we will drag this customer view. So this view was pre-created from the Better Mortgage Toolkit. You can see all these fields, first name, last name, date of birth. And we will bind this view to the customer property in our application. We'll add another tab. This time we'll take the qualifying info view from the toolkit. And once again, it has predefined layouts. We'll bind this also to the application customer. And we'll add a third tab. We'll call it, uh, we'll drag the mortgage view. This time we will bind it to the application mortgage information. So now you can see that we have three tabs full of content for our first screen. Now let's make a few cosmetic edits. Uh, let's call this section Enter Mortgage Application Information. And then we'll go uh, change the style on that to informational, so the color changes. Next, we'll make some changes to the tab names. So we'll call it Customer Information, Qualifying Information, Mortgage Information, just to make it friendlier to users. And finally, we're going to rename where it says Tabs, and we'll call it Application Details. Okay, our layout work is done. There's one final step to do, which is to go back to the coach diagram and to wire the nodes together. So I'll do that very quickly. And then now we'll have a complete coach. Let's save our work. And if we go to the upper right hand corner, there's a run button, uh, which allows you to run the coach. You can do this at any time and just to verify that it works the way we want it to work. The editor allows you to switch back and forth between the various artifacts that you've been working on. For enter application data, we've completed it, so we're going to close it. Now we'll work on a new user interface screen. Instead of creating from scratch this time, we'll make a copy of the enter application data human service, and we'll rename it as assess risk. In the process diagram, the assess risk activity is still using the default human service from iteration one which isn't very useful. We're going to change that implementation and point it to our new assess risk service. We map the data to get passed to the service, and then we go edit the service. We'll start by changing the name of this coach to underwriting assess application risk. Next, we will add another section to the tab container. So there will be four tabs. This one we'll call it underwriting. We'll add one piece of content to this tab, and it will come from our variables panel uh, from the mortgage application data itself. We'll drag this field called Met Risk Requirements, and we'll give it a friendly label. Since this field was defined as a true-false, um, it was already set up as a checkbox. But we'll change this a little bit and turn it into a switch, so it says yes and no. Then we'll change a few uh, colors, and we'll make the text size a little bigger too. Voila, our assess risk coach is complete. Let's test this coach and make sure it runs. And all I'll do is just make sure that the uh, underwriting tab appears and our field is there. So great, we're done. Let's move on to the third and final coach. For this one, we'll do a similar approach where we will uh, duplicate the assess risk uh, human service and we'll call this new one review for approval. Then in the process diagram, I'll go to the review for approval task, point its implementation to this new review for approval human service, map some data, and then I'll open the service and edit the coach. I'll edit the title to something a little more user friendly. Then I'll add another tab of content. 
So we'll have a fifth tab, and we'll call this one Final Decision. I'll add some content to this tab. We'll drag the status field from the mortgage application data, and we'll change the uh, label of that field to make it more user-friendly. And then we're all set. We've now completed the build of iteration two. Hooray! Let's do a playback of the iteration now. We'll press the Run button, and then uh, we'll open up the Instance Details UI, and you'll see we have a task for Enter Application Data. This time around, you see a full coach rather than the generic one. We'll quickly fill in some data in all the tabs, and then we'll press OK. Now we move on to the second task, which is Assess Risk. You see that all the data is there, and we have a new tab for underwriting. We'll select the answer yes, press OK. This task is complete. Now we have our third task, review for approval. Now you can see all the data being passed. Underwriting says yes, and the final decision tab, let's enter accept. And press OK. Now all our tasks are complete. You can see that they're listed under the completed tasks and the process instance is complete. Iteration 2 is now complete. To review, we built screens or coaches for the three human steps in the process. There are a couple takeaways. You can build rich, powerful UI screens with the What You See Is What You Get editor in Process Designer. You can also use toolkits, which are reusable libraries with pre-built components that can greatly reduce your effort. Onward to our last iteration. This time we're going to add a decision to the process flow with multiple branches for different outcomes. Let's take a snapshot of what we did in iteration two. Now let's go to the enter application data task. We're gonna add a step to the flow here uh, after the coach, and we're going to create a simulated call to get a credit check score. Okay, so I'll drag this client side script component, I'll call this credit checked, and then I'm just going to enter in a little script um, below here. In real life, you'd probably want to call a web service or something, but we're just going to do this to test. Save it and close. Next, we'll go to the process diagram and make some changes. I'll drag this decision gateway onto the process flow. I'll reconnect some of the lines and call the gateway approved. And we'll have two branches coming out of it. One will be called approved and the other one will be called declined. Then I'll do a little layout to make things look pretty. Let's scroll up. I'm gonna add another branch to our decision and have it go all the way to the beginning. We'll call this branch More Info Needed. Then when I click on my approved decision, I'm going to put in some logic so it knows which way to go. Um, the, what we'll do is we'll evaluate the status field in the mortgage application data. If the status equals deny, we'll go to the decline branch. If the status is More Info, we'll go to the More Info branch. And otherwise, we'll take the default flow, which is to the approved branch. Let's play back our process now. In the first task, enter application data, I'm just going to put in some minimal data. Then in assess risk, we can see that the credit score showed up. And in review for approval, I'm going to put in more info. Unlike our previous iterations, we have another task, enter application data. So we actually loop back to the beginning. Our decision sent us through the more info branch. So I'll fill in more info. And then assess risk appears, nothing special here. In review for approval, I'll put in deny this time. Now we'll see that our process instance is complete. Iteration three is now complete. To review, we added a decision to the process flow and we had multiple branches to process the different outcomes. Business processes evolve all the time. You're constantly learning new things, getting new requirements, reacting to different situations. IBM BPM makes it really easy for you to change and test your process flows. Let's recap what we did today. 
we built a mortgage approval process application that runs in IBM VPM. We took an iterative approach to solution building. In iteration one, we did the basics by laying out the initial process flow and showing you how to play back the process. In iteration two, we built rich user interface screens for the human workflow steps. In iteration three, we changed the process by adding a decision and multiple branches. Hopefully, you now understand the steps needed to build a solution in IBM BPM. You appreciate IBM BPM's ease of use, and if you're an existing customer, you understand the latest capabilities of the web-based process designer. Thank you very much. Have a good day.